Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas and this is how to create a simple high-low game for PC and mobile and welcome to episode 4. In this tutorial we're going to create some randomized cards to appear on our screen using C Sharp and an array. Don't forget, click the subscribe button and click on the bell icon as well to stay up to date with every tutorial still to come in this series and everything else on game development on my channel. With that in mind, let's get to work. So creating a random card to appear on screen is actually a lot easier than what you would think. As I said last tutorial, when it comes to coding, we start small and build up. So although we need to deal with an array here, let's start with just creating a random number first and foremost. So let's go back into our deal card script and we're going to create another variable here. This variable is going to be a number that's generated either 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, or 12. Reason for that is because that is how the array works. So 0 would be 2, 1 would be 3, 2 would be 4, and so on. So as long as we know that we're always dealing with 2 more than the physical number that we've created, I guess it's easy enough to remember. So public int, short for integer, and we'll have this as card generate semicolon and the process of this is going to be when we press the deal card button we need to set that active so we need to randomize it after we press the button so in this case we're going to have card generate equals random with a capital r dot range and in brackets we can actually select the range we want it to be and like I said there is a reason why we're not dealing with number from 2 to 14 simply because that's how the array is going to work I mean I guess we could always ignore 0 and 1 in the array um, but for now in fact no do you know what? We're going to actually go into this a little bit more in depth than I wanted to because I feel you guys deserve that bit of extra knowledge. So you know what? We are going to do 2 and 14. So we'll deal with 2 and instead of 14 we're actually going to put 15. Just one of those little quirks when dealing with random ranges. It will never generate the maximum number. It will always generate the one below. So in this case if you want between 2 and 14 you've got to put 2 and 15. So 15 is the top level that's maxed out it can't go anymore it can't get to that so it's always going to be between 2 and 14 so we'll always put one more than the maximum value and semicolon now what that will do is it will generate either 2 3 4 5 all the way up to 14 and then what we'll also do is we need to make that equivalent card appear but for now let's just make sure this random range works so let's head back into unity wait for it to compile, press play, and then make sure we are clicked on the settings. And if you look here, card generate is zero. And if we click deal card, it will generate 13. If we keep doing it, it will generate a different number. Cool, easy. Now what we've got to do is make it recognize what card that actually is. So back in deal card, what we're going to do is where we've got public game object dealt card, we're going to change this to an array. To do so, we just need to put open close on the square brackets. That will make this go red. Now, the reason that goes red is because this needs to understand that it is supposed to be an actual array. So we can't just make everything there appear. We have to actually declare a number between well in this case it's going to be 0 and 14 so if we do this now and put let's say um, open square bracket 0 close square bracket and save we need to head back into unity now re-click on the settings and you should see that del card has now changed how it looks is now with the arrow and we can set the size right here and we have 13 cards don't we now if we put 13 the problem that we have got is that we're generating from 2 to 14 remember so remember earlier when i said that we need to deal from 0 to um well 12 and we're always two numbers behind well we need to play around this a little bit more we're going a bit 
more in depth. So element 0 and element 1 are never going to exist in this case. So let's set this as 15 just for now. We can probably play around a little bit more, but we just need to make sure that we do indeed put the correct cards here. So remember, 0 and 1 are going to remain as none. They're not going to be anything at all because of the way we've programmed this. So if we drag 2 onto 2, 3, 4, and so on, uh, be careful if, if you go a little bit wrong, just make sure that you do get the correct ones. You saw I did them a little out of order there, but it doesn't really matter. As long as the correct card goes on the correct object, everything will function just fine. And 14. So we now have all of those in place and I'm going to save this scene just to make sure everything goes to plan. Now what should happen when we press deal card, hopefully, fingers crossed, it should generate let's say number 9 and number 9 should appear. So let's press play and let's try this. Ah, okay. I know why. Hopefully you guys know why. So this is a really good opportunity now for us to explore the console. So we can see here we have an unassigned reference exception. What does that mean? It means that one particular line of code, if we double click it, can't be executed because it doesn't recognize, it doesn't understand. Do you remember we put number zero in there? Well, we don't have anything in zero, do we? So that is the reason why that doesn't work. But the clever thing is we can actually replace that zero with a variable. In this case, card generate. So if, like I said, number nine, for example, we want number nine to appear, we could put number nine in there, or we could put card generate and save. So what that will do is it will generate a number, let's say, like I say, number nine, and then it will say, dealt card, number nine of the array, set it active. So if we head back into Unity and then clear that error, click back on project, press play. And we should have this all working perfectly. So there we go. We've generated the queen. We can see number 12 has appeared. Card generate is indeed number 12 and it has made this appear. Now, one thing I will note, if we press it again, it will make different things appear. You can see all the cards coming on here, but we can't physically see them because, well, obviously the queen is the highest card here. If we end up generating 13 or 14 like that, it will appear. But all of these cards are indeed in the scene. It's just that we can't see them because we haven't cleared the queen. But there we go. Each and every time we press it, we do get cards appear and it is randomized. There's number four. So the idea of this is once we've dealt the card, we actually need it to uh, theoretically disappear, I guess, um, because we don't want to be able to press it once again to make more cards appear. So what we can do is we can use a quick line of code after we've got the card on screen to make high and low appear and deal card disappear. So let's do that now. Let's set high card. In fact, let's rename them. Let's have high button and low button. And let's select both of those, turn them off. And let's go back into deal card and let's set those two objects as variables. So public game object high button semicolon and second one public game object low button semicolon and we also need the uh, deal button as well don't we so public game object deal button semicolon so let's get all of this in order we need to have high button is on so inside the deal my new card method high button dot set active and in brackets true low 
button dot set active also true and finally deal button dot set active false because we want that to disappear so if we save this now and we head back into unity remember this script is on the settings so we just need to add those game objects and i'm going to close up deal card because we don't need it right now so high button is going to be there low button there and finally deal button is there so i'm going to save my scene save my project and press play so we can deal card and there we go we can either guess high or low and obviously we can't quite guess just yet because we've not coded that just yet but either way it still all works so deal so let's say i don't know higher than four if only that worked which is what we're going to do in the next tutorial so the next tutorial we are going to make that high button work and probably make the low button work to be honest because it seems a bit silly but either way what we do need to make happen is we need to have something that keeps track of what card is actually out so we're going to create a global monitor for the current card and then we're going to at least make that high button work so we can guess whether it's high or not so until that next tutorial thank you very much for watching guys